Preface What much of the population knows about terrorists stems from gossip, hearsay, generalized data, and assumptions. Common expectations about terrorists include that they're uneducated, young, of Middle Eastern descent, unemployed or poor, and lastly, evil. Three years ago, we set out to collect data on the American citizens, both men and women, charged with acts related to terrorism, so we could provide the facts and help the public understand the true profile of an American terrorist. The chances of an act of terror affecting an average American citizen are small, but the fear of terrorism is inescapable. To most people, terrorism seems to occur randomly and little can be done to avoid it. Understanding the real data, discovering its patterns, and generating a true terrorist profile will reduce the apparent randomness and lack of control. Defining the terrorist profile is one step toward taking control back from those who seek to change our way of life. In addition to the collection of 519 men and women charged with terrorism, we were able to gather information from current literature that supported or enhanced the work. The necessary information was gleaned from court records, government and academic databases, books, newspapers, and other media sources. In an age where fake news has become commonplace, one might question the legitimacy of using media to obtain facts, but those sources are the best for finding personal information on an individual, such as their level of education or marital status. Court records rarely have such information. The authors worked diligently to provide listeners with the most accurate information possible. However, sources can be wrong and sometimes that data is populated in several places, giving the illusion of multiple sources. This research is not an attempt to single out or cause pain to any individual or group. For ease of identification and to highlight the number of American citizens born in the USA, individuals in this narration are identified by their birth name first. The names given after conversion to Islam follow. It's only fair to say this research was only possible because of the men and women that did similar research and made their work public so that others could build on it. Chapter 1. Terrorism Defined It was an 80-mile drive from Mesquite, Nevada to Las Vegas, one that retiree Stephen Paddock made in the fall of 2017. His Mandalay Bay Hotel suite overlooked the Harvest Country Music Festival, so he could enjoy the music without mingling with the crowd of 22,000 fans. Over the past week, he'd spent his time gambling, much like many Las Vegas visitors. But Paddock was the exception. Gambling was not his main desire on this trip. Paddock could barely walk around due to the stash of weapons in his room. The collection included 47 guns, many with semi-automatic firing ability. On that warm Sunday evening, he looked out onto the crowd and, without missing a beat, picked up one of his semi-automatic weapons and fired into the gathering, killing 59 and injuring 527 concertgoers. People watched with horror and deemed this man responsible for the worst mass shooting in U.S. history, a terrorist. But they were wrong. Incidents like this muddle our understanding of terrorism. And so, before we can discuss such a complex topic, we need to establish an operational definition of terrorism. For this book, we will merge three definitions from the sources that are cited most often by terrorism experts. The United States Code, Title 18, the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the United States Department of Defense. Title 18 is the criminal and penal code of the federal government of the United States. 
Subjects covered by Title 18 include biological and chemical weapons, as well as terrorism. Title 18 Crimes and Criminal Procedure defines international terrorism as, and we quote, activities that involve violent acts or acts dangerous to human life that is a violation of the criminal law, appear to be intended to intimidate or coerce a civilian population, influence the policy of government by intimidation or coercion, or to affect the conduct of a government by mass destruction, assassination, or kidnapping, and occur primarily outside the territorial jurisdiction of the United States. Close quote. Domestic terrorism is defined the same way, but the acts occur primarily within the territorial jurisdiction of the United States. Note that the objective is only defined in general terms, to intimidate or coerce or affect the conduct of government. No specific objectives are given. Most of the definition is clear, but the difference between international and domestic terrorism can be confusing. If training, planning, obtaining materials, or other activities directly or indirectly related to the Terror Act took place in the United States, then it becomes a domestic act of terror. If the activities happened outside of the United States, it becomes an act of international terrorism. Al-Qaeda, for example, planned the September 11, 2001 attack on the United States from outside of the country's boundaries. And so it meets the definition of an international terrorist act. The bombing of the Boston Marathon by the Tsarnev brothers in 2013 was planned and executed in the United States, and therefore is domestic terrorism. The Code of Federal Regulations assigns lead agency responsibility for investigating acts of terrorism to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and defines terrorism as and we quote, the unlawful use of force and violence against persons or property to intimidate or coerce a government, the civilian population, or any segment thereof, in furtherance of political or social objectives. Close quote. Here, the definition specifies that the intent of terrorism is to advance political or social objectives. The FBI uses the same language as Title 18 to distinguish between domestic and international terrorism, but expands on the difference to better clarify. International acts of terrorism are inspired by or associated with designated foreign terrorist organizations or nations, while domestic acts are inspired by or associated with primarily U.S.-based movements that espouse extremist ideologies of a political, religious, social, racial, or environmental nature. The DOD's definition of terrorism is as follows, quote, the unlawful use of violence or threat of violence often motivated by religious, political, or other ideological beliefs, to instill fear and coerce governments or societies in pursuit of goals that are usually political. Close quote. This definition provides examples for the motivation and objectives of terrorism without limiting the definition to those objectives. The DOD does not openly provide a distinction between international and domestic terrorism. Combining these three commonly cited definitions, we can create an operational definition of terrorism. Quote, the illegal use of force, violence, or threat of violence for the purpose of intimidating, instilling fear, and coercing a civilian or government entity with the goal of advancing religious, political, or ideological objectives. Close quote. Thus, the terrorist seeks to induce a change in the ideology or set of beliefs, principles, or ethics of its civilian or government target. The type of crime and scale of its outcome should not be used to determine if a crime is an act of terrorism. A secular terrorist group, for example, might use violence to advance their ideology, but will likely be selective in what type of violence they use, 
because they want to avoid losing political power and support. Certain actions could damage the organization's reputation and limit what they could accomplish through political means. Religiously motivated groups may try to inflict as many casualties as possible because their belief in an afterlife renders the loss of life irrelevant. They might keep such violence away from their territory, however, because killing or destroying the homes of their members will not ingratiate the leaders to the followers. In July 2016, there were several events involving the police shooting African-American male youths. This perceived injustice against the African-American community stirred one individual, Micah Johnson, to open fire on the police in Dallas, Texas, killing five and wounding seven officers. Many news media outlets, such as CNN, called this an act of terror. But the desire of an African-American male who showed interest in radical black power organizations to shoot white police officers is a hate crime. The FBI describes a hate crime as, quote, criminal offense against a person or property motivated in whole or in part by an offender's bias against a race, religion, disability, sexual orientation, ethnicity, gender, or gender identity. A hate crime is a traditional offense, like murder or arson, but with an added element of bias. The sentence cannot exceed 10 years. It is typically used as an add-on charge to increase the punishment for another offense. Interestingly, in Islamic law, the same law that covers hate crimes includes terrorism. There is no distinction between political, ideological, or religious goals, because in Sharia law, they are one and the same. The year 1968 has been identified as the year of modern international terrorism. At the time, there were 11 foreign terrorist organizations operating in the world, whereas today, there are 67 foreign terrorist organizations in the world. In the 1970s, domestic security crimes were renamed as terrorism crimes. It was the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act of 1996 that introduced the country to terrorism as a crime in the United States. As recently as 1983, the FBI would not investigate a terrorist act unless it had more than one person involved. Today, the majority of successful terrorism prosecutions in the U.S. have been against American citizens that have aligned themselves with international groups like Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, Al-Nusra, and the Islamic State, or ISIS. Chapter 1. Summary this chapter identified three definitions of domestic terrorism that boil down to violent acts that violate state and federal laws happening on U.S. soil. The terrorists commit a violent act such as killing, kidnapping, or mass destruction with the goal of intimidating people to change policies or laws. If the individuals or groups committing the acts of violence are doing so because the victims do not follow their personal or religious beliefs or can be used as a tool for political gain, then the chances are they are acts of terrorism. If an individual pulls out a gun and fires at school kids or co-workers, the individual is not likely to be prosecuted as a terrorist. If an American-born terrorist plans and trains for an attack in the U.S. while not on U.S. soil, they are an international terrorist. If a foreign national plans, trains, or uses resources found in the U.S., they would be considered a domestic terrorist. If the planning, training, and execution of the violent act occurred both on U.S. soil and abroad, the judicial system would have to decide where it fits. Terrorism as a crime is not new. However, federal laws prosecuting terrorists are new. While most terrorists are charged with crimes other than terrorism, or in addition to terrorism, the acts remain quite similar.
they all attempt to instill fear to force change upon a population.